Hi, welcome back. And we're up to chapter eight of my story. And I, in each of these videos, I read a different chapter. Now this chapter I call The Psycho Song, Talking to My Body and Radiotherapy. I'd been and had the MRI scan in Milton Keynes General, uh, which was okay. I'm not good with hospitals, but during this and other scans, I felt strangely calm when, when they took the scans. The time came for me to have the PET-C scan in Northampton General Hospital. The lady in charge stressed that I should not move while the scan was taking place. The scanner is like a long white tube into which your body fits and then they take the scan. She said that some people feel claustrophobic and asked if I would like a pair of headphones and listen to some music. Now, the theory being that I would relax and be able to remain still during the scan. Well, I'm not normally claustrophobic, but the chance to relax to soothing music seemed a good idea. So I put the headphones on, lay back, and was gently transported into the tunnel. I wait for the scan and the music to start. Now I anticipated maybe some easy listening music, perhaps a bit of Sinatra, Michael Bublé. I mean, Nat King Cole would have been good, or even some acoustic guitars. Well, the music started and it wasn't a tune that I was familiar with. But it went something like this. You're in love with a psycho. You're in love with a psycho. You're in love with a psycho. I started praying furiously. Father, please don't make me laugh. Lord, help me to stay still. I don't want to move. I mustn't move. Don't let me move. Why are you doing this to me? I was sure that the angels were congratulating him on his good joke. I said to the lady operating the machine, in my day, we used to sing, she loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, you're in love with a psycho. Like all the tests that I underwent, I would have to wait for the results, which usually took a couple of weeks. I was assuming I would be healed and somehow the doctors would confirm this once all the scan results came through. I spent the time between tests continuing to try to understand his word and the power involved in my healing. One of the things that really encouraged me was to read the testimonies of other Christians who had received healing from cancer. One of the books that I'd been given when I went to Bath was by Dodie Osteen. Now, Dodie was sent home to die with stage four liver cancer in 1984. Uh, she would not accept what the doctors were saying about she was going to die. She went home and studied the word and believed in God's promises. And as I read this to you in 2020, She's still alive, having put her faith in the power and the word of God. The results of the PET-C scan were actually inconclusive, so it was decided I would have a series of biopsies carried out under general anaesthetic. So I went in for day surgery and they took about 10 samples from around the back of my mouth, the back of my tongue and round the neck area. And boy, that was really painful. And as I lay there after the biopsies, all the negative thoughts flooded into my mind. In the time between the biopsies and getting the results, an incredible thing happened. I was in the bathroom talking to my body. This wasn't the first time by any means, but this time was different. I looked at the mirror 
and straight into my eyes. And I said, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you will align yourself with the will of God. You will get rid of all the symptoms and pain. You will kick out all signs of this filthy disease cancer. And you will do it in the authority given to me by the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Straight away my hands that were at my side started shaking, both hands. I couldn't stop them, but gradually they rose up and the fingers were facing towards my neck. I kept speaking to my body and my hands kept shaking. After a short while, the hands started to return to my sides and stop shaking. And at that point, I was filled with a peace. And I knew for sure that I'd been healed. Praise the Lord. Unfortunately, the world does not always agree what God tells us is right. In this case, I knew for sure that I was healed. And I fully expected the all clear when the results came through. I was in for a shock. The specialist said that I was to have radiotherapy for five days a week and for six weeks. And this was going to be in Northampton General Hospital. Now, Northampton General Hospital is about 18 miles from our home and Carol was working at this time. So there was all sorts of logistic problems with this. He also said that they would fit a stomach peg so that they could feed me through the tube into my stomach as my throat would be too sore to eat anything. This was devastating. The appointment was set for two weeks time when I would be fitted with a head mask so that they could ensure the rays targeted the cancer. They would also fit the stomach peg. For the following two weeks, there was constant digging from Satan. So you thought you were healed? I replied, I'm not going to die. I'm going to live and tell the world that I'm healed by the name of Jesus, who defeated you. And you know where you are headed. What's that pain? I'm not going to die. I'm going to live. And tell the world that I'm healed by the name of, in the name of Jesus, who defeated you. And you know where you're headed. Have you planned your funeral? I'm not going to die. I'm going to live and tell the world that I'm healed by the name of Jesus, who defeated you. And you know where you are headed. I knew that if I stood up to him, he would flee. The scriptures were a perfect weapon, along with the name of Jesus. But I was worried about God. And what was he thinking about my faith? I knew that I knew that I knew I was healed. But here I'd agreed to have radiotherapy. Pray to God constantly to tell me, to guide me. Was I doing the right thing? But nothing, nothing came back. No word at all. And that's where we'll finish chapter eight. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's encouraged you and I hope to see you next time. So God bless you and goodbye.